Good morning, everybody. And it is 4.59 a.m. here in Iowa, my time. And uh, I have a little uh, video here. The Republicans are supporting Democrats over Trump's backed Republicans. Several high-file Republicans have announced support for Democratic nominees for office in battleground states over the mega candidates opposing them. As midterm elections approach, Trump has used his platform to endorse several Republican candidates, but the rest of the GOP does not appear to be falling in line. For example, Trump announced his support for Representative Mark Fincham, Republican of Arizona, in his campaign for Secretary of State. However, State Representative Joel John, Republican for Arizona, went against the grain by announcing that he would endorse Adrian Fontes, F-O-N-T-E-S, Fontes, Adrian Fontes, a Democrat. Our nation's history is full of heroes who bravely stood up to do what was right, even if it wasn't popular in their respective camps, John stated. We need more people like that today. I am proud to support Adrian Fontes and join noble Republicans and independents who are willing to put country before party, he continued. His opponent is someone who sought to get rid of voting by mail and has sought to overturn the 2020 election Arizona deserves better. In Kansas, two former Republican governors announced support for Democrat Governor Laura Kelly despite Trump's vocal support for her opposition. Attorney General Derek Schmidt. Governors Mike Hayden, representative of uh, a Republican from Kansas, Bill Graves, a Republican from Kansas, both lauded Kelly for her ability to reach across the aisle. Fifty years in Kansas politics, I've seen the good times and the bad, Hayden said. The affairs of Kansas are in good shape right now, and I credit the bipartisan approach of government Governor Kelly. Kansas and Arizona are not alone. In Oklahoma, three state congressmen are supporting Senate candidate Kendra Horn, Democrat, over Trump's pick of Representative Mark Wayne Mullen, Republican. In August, Pennsylvania saw a swing of 16 Republicans withdrawing their support for from Governor candidate Doug Mastrino after photos were released showing him in a conf Confederate uniform. They now support Democrat candidate Josh Shapiro. Former Republican Lieutenant Governor Bill Ratliff made a similar stand in Texas by putting his support behind Mike Collier, Democrat for Lieutenant Governor. As a former elected Republican, I'm putting my partisanship aside and joining the growing number of Republicans voting for the man they think is best for Texas, and that's Mike Collier, Ratliff stated. Boy, they're sure building up the Democrats again, aren't they? Hmm. My. Well. Hmm. I don't know what to think. But anyway, next article. Trump says FBI didn't take shoes off in his bedroom. Last week, former President Donald Trump went on an early morning rant on Truth Social to complain about the FBI's August 8th raid on Mar-a-Lago, claiming the place had been ransacked. Well, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that at all. The former president had been staying in Bedminster and only returned to Mar-a-Lago last weekend for the first time since the raid, which some in the Democrat supporting media described as Trump returning to the scene of the crime. In a post on Truth Social early Monday morning, Trump said he had arrived the night before and finally had a chance to check out the scene of yet another government crime, namely the FBI raid. The former president complained about the FBI violating his Fourth Amendment rights, said uh, Mar-a-Lago had been ransacked. 
He said the agents left his home in a far different condition than the way I left it, accusing the agents of not removing their shoes in his bedroom. Well, that would kind of upset me, too. But they ain't going to take time to take their shoes off when they're on a raid. I'm sorry there, Mr. Uh, Trump. In another post before arriving at Mar-a-Lago, <laughs> Trump said he would finally be able to see the results of the unnecessary ransacking of rooms. That is a shame. They must have turned that place upside down. Thanks to Biden. But I guess he did some wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. He irritated, irritated. The FBI wrongfully took things, said his Fourth Amendment rights were totally violated, calling the raid a grave invasion of privacy. Well, that I can see. Yes, I can see. And Biden was behind the raid. I guess we kind of all knew that, though. That really was not news, but... All right. Let's see if I can get this going. It's still downloading, so hang on. This will be the last article for me. And um, for today, until this evening... Come on, Biden. All right, Biden has to be angry with Bill Clinton after this devastating betrayal. The southern border is in bad shape and Joe Biden can't be happy after former President Bill Clinton stated that there's a limit to how many people in the U.S. can support. This comes after millions of illegal immigrants have already crossed the border this year. This year, U.S. border agents have encountered over 2.1 million illegal entries. 2.1 million which is the highest number in the history of the Department of Homeland Security. In August, there were over 200,000 crossings. Clinton claimed that there is a limit to how many people the U.S. can accept in the country. I thought there was a law about that. That did dawn on me earlier, and I was going to look something up, and I it went in one ear and out the other, I guess. I got busy doing something else. There's got to be a limit, you know. Yeah, there's got to be a limit. During Joe Biden's term, the number of illegal entries into the country reached unprecedented. Pre Here I go again, people. Hang on. Presidented, unprecedented levels. Phew, I got that one. The U.S. Border Patrol and its uh, predecessor, the OFO, had recorded over 189,000 encounters per month, which is significantly more than the number of encounters that Trump encountered during his term. During his two terms in office, Biden had already recorded over a million more illegal entries than Trump in 2022. He had already encountered over 2 million illegal entries. The people of the U.S. are fed up with Biden's failure to address the country's problems. The writing is on the wall, and it's clear that he will not change his policies. Despite the growing number of illegal entries, Biden will continue to do what his masters have asked him to do. Trying to break the United States, Democrats. What do the Democrats think they're going to gain? Well, that was really kind of a short three-item deal there. But um, I guess something's got to be done. The midterms are coming up. I can't picture. I really can't picture two more years of this. The Democrats have done everything they can to break us. And they're close. Not only that, bringing us close to World War III. No. Something's got to give pretty soon. 
I don't tell people when to vote or how to vote, really, I should say. But, boy, in my way of thinking, midterm elections, let me just put it this way. Do what you feel is right. But just think about two more years of this. Where is that going to put us? We're down as far as we can go right now. But I guess you can always go lower. I'd much rather see it go up. We've got our grandchildren to think about, our great-grandchildren to think about, and then their children, and then children from them. We don't want this for, the, for them. So something has just got to let go pretty soon. Like I said in that other video, we got to start climbing back up. But it could get worse. And I said it is going to get worse. I'm not the only one saying that. It's in all the articles. All the newscasts. Numbers don't lie. They can be misdrewed possibly a little bit. Because it's hard to keep up with all them great big numbers. Of how many's coming in our country. How many's getting killed in our country. Murdered. And usually for no reason. Taking an innocent life just because they felt like killing them. The fentanyl, the drug of fentanyl. Let me please, please impress again. Check your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors. If anything, anything looks suspicious, if they're acting anywhere out of control or anything that you're not used to seeing, you know, dilated pupils, argumentative, restlessness. What else do I want to say? They just don't. Give a damn. I mean, they're out in another world with these drugs eating at their brain cells. And all I can say is just call for help. But that fentanyl, that is, that is so thick right now in our country. You can't imagine. But you have got to be alert. Keep your eyes peeled. You have got to just be on the fastest step there is. If you see anything out of the ordinary, a way a person is acting. They've never acted that way before. Because you don't want to walk into a room or into your neighbor's home someday and find them just dead on the floor. You don't want to do that your own children, your grandchildren, your grandbabies, brother, sister, cousins. It don't matter what age. It don't matter anymore. And I pray, oh, how I pray for security for our young people, starting from preschool to kindergarten, going up through grade school, middle school, junior high school, senior high school and college. It's everywhere. And it's out to get them. You've read the articles. I'm not saying anything new here. You all know. But that's the only way we can help. We can do our part. And some can get cured. Some can be brought back to being a normal person. But the ones that have been on it for so long, it's hard to say. Can they be saved? Who knows? Who knows? Well, people, I'm looking at the camera this time. Instead of going all over my things up here on my computer and trying to make sure everything is working properly and <laughs> whatever. But God love you. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for visiting my channel. Thank you for hitting the like button. And I'm just so thankful. And I enjoy doing this in memory of Walter. 
he was a great coach and I miss him we all that was involved with Walter miss him and I miss Amy I pray that Amy will come back to us as soon as she heals good night for me it's a good night.